What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life up here in Washington and this video right here is the video that we've all been waiting for because this is going to kick off the van build series of the new Sprinter van that I've been talking about for the last three or four months. Now I've been in the shop grinding away building on this thing and I've had the camera rolling through the entire process so that I can create these videos because this thing is going to be my new tiny home on wheels as I get this thing out into the backcountry, out exploring dirt roads, cooking, camping, doing what I love to do, but most importantly, bringing it home to you guys on the YouTube channel. The sponsor of today's video is Omaze, and I've got a cool announcement about them and a tiny home that we can find out more about over at omaze.com forward slash LTVL. But in the meantime, let's jump into this Sprinter van and let's see how it unfolds. Today, we're gonna dig into building a subfloor. First off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in here and we're gonna tear out the factory floor that came stock from the Mercedes-Benz factory here inside the Sprinter van. Then once we get that up, we're gonna do some cleaning, then we're gonna lay down some first strips, do some insulating, and then put in a brand new subfloor. So let's get to work on it. signifies the official start of this build. It's actually underway. I've been waiting for this for a very long time, and here we are. This floor is about to come up. Because of the cold weather camping that I like to do, I want to make sure that the floor is well insulated and set up for that. And we're going to do that by laying down some one inch by two inch furring strips across here, down the floor. Then I'll put insulation in the gaps between that and then we'll put the plywood down. Before I did that, I wanted to come up with a bit of a plan of where I'm going to put my diesel heater. Probably 90% of the people that I see doing the diesel heaters here inside the sprayer van, they put them underneath the passenger seat. And I wanna try something a little bit different when I put in my diesel heater. For me, I'm thinking that I want the heat more centralized in the van. And so I'm thinking about this location here, the intake will come in this direction, then the hot air will come out and then I'll do a 90. And so it's exhausted here into this area which is more centralized here in the van and I'm hoping that will be more efficient. The great thing about the Sprinter is the fact that it is diesel and the diesel tank is actually right here. So the auxiliary pickup for the diesel heater is right in this vicinity. So I think this is gonna work really, really well putting the diesel heater here. And then of course there'll be cabinetry and stuff built around it. Where is the heater gonna go? How are you gonna insulate the walls? How are you gonna lay out your lighting? Where are you gonna put your cabinets, your kitchen, etc.? It's all of these details that come together in making a perfect tiny home and really maximizing that space. And I've actually got an opportunity where perhaps you guys could be making some of these decisions 
on your very own tiny home because the sponsor of today's video, which is Omaze, is giving away a tiny home worth up to $150,000 and it's built by Tiny Heirloom. They'll even fly you out to Portland, Oregon where you can help make some of these decisions on your very own tiny home. Choose everything from the architectural touches all the way down to the luxury finishes. One of the best lessons that I've learned in life is learning to live minimally in a small space and I think it's something that everybody could benefit from. And that's why this is such a cool opportunity. Now, Omaze raises funds for charities by giving away these cool life experiences. In fact, the charity that they're supporting on this giveaway is a charity by the name of Girls Build. Now, Girls Build is a nonprofit organization based out of Portland, Oregon, that inspires curiosity and confidence in girls through the world of building. Girls Build teaches girls 8 to 14 years old the basics of carpentry, plumbing, electrical, roofing, auto and bike mechanics, plus more. Your donations can help fund summer camp and class scholarships. So to help out this great charity and for your opportunity to win this tiny home worth up to $150,000, head on over to www.omaze.com forward slash LTVL. In the meantime, I'm going to jump back into measuring and cutting these first strips so we can get this subfloor underway so that I can get out in my own tiny home. Okay, so we can see here inside the van, everything's just temporarily laid out in here. I've got them all numbered. One, two, three, four, so on and so forth, all the way to the back of the van. And of course, I used a square to make sure everything was square here across. At this point, I'm going to pull all this out. I'm going to do the waterproofing on it. Also, while the furring strips are out getting waterproofed, I'm also going to lay down the kill mat. This is extra sound deadening that'll go in and uh, help deaden some of the sound that comes up through the floor. And then once that's all done, we'll go in and we'll glue the strips. I've got it marked on the floor where the edges of those furring strips are going to be. That way as I lay this down, I can make sure that my kill mat is not going to be getting in way of the furring strips here. I start from one end. I work my way to the other it's very important that you keep air pockets out of there because air pockets can be a hazard for moisture getting trapped in there See how I took my time and I just worked my way across here and just got all this laid out and molded down. So you just gotta take your time and and massage all of this out so that it lays flat across all the surfaces. The important thing is you just don't want any ear pockets down inside there. Now what we can do is we can take the big one and we can just roll across the top and this just saves a lot of time than trying to do this with the small one.
this point I've got the front portion of the kill matting down. I think probably what I'm going to do is take a break from that and then lay out this grid of furring strips. That'll get me all the way to the first sheet of plywood and then I'll keep working my way back. One thing I want to do is spray some Thompson water seal on these pieces of wood if it does get wet for any reason. Just some peace of mind in knowing that this wood is protected and that I'm always going to have a solid foundation in my subfloor. sound deadening material is laid down and pressed into place. Also the furring strips have been waterproofed and those have been glued down in place as well. Towards the front of the van in the high traffic areas I did do a 12 inch center between those furring strips. Back here towards the back where there's less traffic I was a little bit looser on the spacing. These center blocks here I used them as weight so that they would stick better. I'm gonna go ahead and start up here behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat and I'm gonna start laying down some insulation. As you can see here behind me, the insulation is now 100% complete here on the floor. And this is, I feel like, a very good start to getting this thing a good solid insulation. From here, I've got a floor that has actually been CNC machined to fit all the nooks and crannies here in my 2020 Sprinter van. Here over all of this work that I did earlier with the furring strips and the insulation. to installing the diesel heater here before I do the final fastening of the floor. Diesel heater is gonna go in this location back here, like so. 
intake here, exhaust here, all the combustion fumes are gonna dip out the bottom of the floor. So for this project, I'm using a stepper bit that goes all the way to an inch and one eighth because that's what we're gonna need for the holes for the exhaust and the intake of the diesel heater. The nice thing is the diesel heaters come with this mounting plate, which also acts as a bit of a pattern of where you need to drill your holes. Lay our plate in here. Looks like we did really good. Spot on. It's exactly what we like to see. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is use this mounting plate and rather than running the studs of the heater through the floor of the sprinter and mounting it that way, I'm gonna mount it to this mounting plate here and then use small bolts that fit in the same thread hole as the studs. Then essentially what I can do is I can just run some self-tapping screws right through these four mounting holes, which just so happen to actually sit on top of those corrugated ridges in the sprinter van. So if we pop this cover off, we can basically see what the inside of these heaters look like. This here is the heating element of the heater. With the two inlet and exhaust that are plumbed down below, there is a combustion chamber where the diesel fires inside of here. This heats up. Fresh air from the inside of the cabin comes in through here, it blows across here, heats up, and exhaust here is hot air. The important thing is that all the dangerous fumes and exhaust goes out the bottom of the van and not inside the van, and all you have here is clean, dry air inside the cabin of your van. It is now 7.30 a.m. Been going at it all night. I am freaking tired. There's a subfloor permanently screwed down and attached. There's a diesel heater installed. It's almost hooked up and operational. We've got the start of a very, very good home. This is very, very exciting. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down for the evening and I'm gonna go hit the hay and get some sleep so I can get back at it first thing in the morning. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the first installment of the van build series here on the Living the Van Life YouTube channel. It's very exciting to be able to get to share with you this entire process. If you guys have made it this far into the video, I'd like to go ahead and take this opportunity to invite you to become a subscriber by hitting the subscribe button. And if you do hit the subscribe button, make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that is actually what's going to notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Make sure and hit the like button. Most importantly, hit the comment button and leave a comment in the feedback section down below. I would love to hear your guys' idea of some of the things you would try if you were the ones building out a Sprinter van. And let's not forget about the sponsor of today's video, which was Omaze. For your opportunity to win that tiny home, make sure and head on over to www.omaze.com forward slash LTVL. Nonetheless, make sure and stay tuned for the very next video here in the build series coming out very, very soon. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace out. Keep on trucking.